Hey, welcome. Let me show you how I made this 3D printed Mandalorian helmet and how you can apply these techniques to make your own. In this video, we will cover the post processing of the print. There are timestamps throughout the video if you are interested in any particular part. So, you have your printed helmet. If you're printing your own, how to get to this stage will be covered in another video. The helmet looks great, but the supports need to be removed. If you're buying a helmet, most sellers remove the supports themselves, I certainly do. Take your time removing them as it will make the sanding stage easier, and the helmet will look better. With the Mando helmet, they're quite simple, although the visor can be hard to remove. I use a flathead screwdriver and a hammer to smash it out, but you need to be careful since I have cracked helmets in the past. You're using the two essentially as a chisel, so be mindful to direct it at the supports and not the main print. Trim any remaining pieces with a pair of wire cutters. Onto the sanding stage. 3D printed objects will have layer lines that you will want to sand down to allow the paint to sit flat and achieve a smooth looking helmet. You will want to start with a low grit and move up incrementally. I found that starting off with a 60 or 80 grit to be best and then moving up to 100, 180 and going no higher than 240 at this stage. I will use higher grits at later stages. If you're planning to sand any more than just one helmet, invest in one of these power sanders. Not any one of these particularly, but just a power sander in general. I've had two different versions and found the random orbital one to work best. Sanding is a very long and tiring process, so if you can save some time and energy, it is very worth it in my opinion. You can pick up a fairly cheap one on Amazon. Sanding by hand is doable and I will be using my hands for hard to reach spots, but it will take much longer if you do that for the whole helmet. Eye and respiration protection is also key. A set of goggles and an appropriately rated mask such as N95 or anything that protects you from small dust particles. Alternatively, if you're in an environment where you don't want much dust, you can wet sand with even high grit sandpapers and it will keep the dust particles down. For this stage, I use the power sander on medium power, but you can experiment to see what works best for you. The technique is to go over the helmet in circular motion, and sometimes going up and down against the layer lines is also helpful. Not stopping in one place for too long and not pressing very hard if you're using a power sander. You want to press just a little harder than the weight of the sander itself. Problems can arise if you stop in one place for too long, as it will melt the plastic. Although if you do melt it like this, don't panic, as you can wait a few seconds for it to cool down and sand it down again. Just don't melt it anymore. This is also a great example of why I recommend to use coloured filaments for prop making instead of white, as the coloured ones will visibly change colour when you've sanded them down like the black helmet changes into grey. White, however, will be more difficult to distinguish. The more thorough you are with the sanding stage, the better the results you will see. We will keep going back to sanding throughout the different processing stages. If the helmet is printed vertically, then most obvious layer lines will be on top. Give the top a good go, but don't bother smoothing it out perfectly, as that's the area we will focus on most when we do the filling. However, we don't want to be covering the entire helmet in filler, which you're more than welcome to do, it will just take a long time to sand down. So focus on smoothing out the layer lines now, since when we get to the filler primer stage, it will be very difficult to get rid of those layer lines and you will spend a lot of money on those filler primers if you try to do it that way. Make sure to get some low grit paper and work on the area between the eyes, since that's where the supports are resting and the surface is very rough. Do the same for the bottom of the helmet, and also with slightly higher grip paper, work in the areas that power sander just would struggle to reach. Remember to sand all the separate attachments for the helmet too. Once the helmet looks visibly smooth, and you can't feel any layer lines if you run over it with your nail, time to move on to the filler stage. Now we're aiming to cover up all the remaining imperfections and large layer lines with the filler. When it comes to the types of filler, you will want to look for an easy to sand filler that is not too expensive. I've had most luck with wood fillers. The two I use most often are on the screen now. Depending on where you live, you will have different brands of these wood fillers, so it may just be a case of trial and error which one you like most, since I found all of them to be slightly different in the way that they handle and how they sand. If you're in America, you will have access to Bondo, which is meant to be very good. I have also tried two-part body fillers like these, 
and was honestly very impressed with how smooth you can get them during the sanding stage, as I have noticed that the wood fillers tend to crumble a little bit. But those are tricky to work with since they're rather toxic and require skin and breathing protection. Meanwhile, wood fillers are not so irritable and you can also wash them off with water. But always read the label on the back just to make sure. The helmet's eye section and the underneath of the print are also key if you're looking for that perfect finish. Cleaning up any overflow and using a toothpick to get the filler out of any sections where you may not want it will also save you time sanding later. You don't want to apply too much filler as it may affect the performance of it and again result in unnecessary sanding time. But don't stress too much, just do what feels right. Just a case of trial and error. Wait for the filler to dry, time for which will vary. Once again, read the label. This one was meant to take 30 minutes, but I layered it heavily than recommended, so had to wait longer. Now back to the sanding stage, using a slightly higher grit paper this time around, 180 or 240. Sand down the filler to make the helmet even smoother. The sandpaper will often get clogged and you will either have to change it or you can try unclogging it by flicking on the back. In my case, it didn't get clogged, but I was very quickly noticing that this particular filler was sanding down way too quickly with the 180 grit paper, so I switched it up to 240 and lowered the speed of the power sander. Let me briefly touch on why this entire sanding and filling process is even necessary. So layer lines are inevitable due to the way 3D printers work, especially when talking about FDM 3D printers, you often want to go for larger layer size to increase the strength and the print speed, but that does inevitably lead to more work. With resin printers for example, it is mostly sufficient to use filler primer or a light sand. However, for full-sized helmets, it will take a very long time to print, be more expensive, and very few resin printers can accommodate such a large object to be printed in one go. When a printer is tuned well, not much sanding is required. In the case of this particular helmet, it got a little bit more rough than I would normally like it, but because I'm not sending it out to anyone and working on it myself, I don't mind a little bit of extra work. And it's also great to show you guys that just because it hasn't come out perfectly, it doesn't mean that you have to bid it. By no means was this a bad print, but even with very rough prints, you can fix it by just post-processing more. So if your print did not turn out all that smooth, don't fall in despair. I will cover how to get smooth prints in another video because it's not about having the most expensive printer or even the best print settings, although a few things do need to be adjusted. Far more important is getting your printer calibrated right. Anyway, there's not much point in going any higher than 240 grit now, as that's mostly sufficient even for paints. But if you wish to go higher, you can do so after applying the filler primer at a later stage. Don't bother with it now. Remember to sand down the bottom of the helmet the eye section, and also any filler that might have gotten stuck on the inside of the helmet. Once you're done with the sanding, some may suggest to go for a round of wet sanding. However, wood fillers often don't respond well to water, and frankly, there's no point wet sanding just yet. I will discuss wet sanding in the next video once we cover filler priming. For now, your helmet should be smooth enough to start preparing it for the painting stage, which is exactly what's going to be the topic of the next video. If you found this one useful though, please like, subscribe and comment any feedback or tips you may have picked up yourself. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one.